Time. I'm, I'm super excited about the guys that are returning. Uh, Daniel, Adrio, uh, Gabe was aboard, and of course, uh, Jonathan Holmes, who was probably one of the fan favorites. Uh, uh, so those guys are, are trying to step in in big, in big fashion and, and kind of be leaders for the young guys that are, that are coming on board. Uh, but the beauty of it is, we've had guys on campus uh, since June and giving those guys an opportunity to get acclimated. And, the day-to-day -day task of you know, going to class and, and, and also working out and, and trying to become better basketball players. And so now we've reached the point now, official practice starts, and uh, very, very excited. I'm excited about the possibilities. You know, on paper, uh, it was a good recruiting class, a very heralded recruiting class, but uh, I'm always one of those guys, I, I don't rush to judge. You know, the proof would be in the pudding. And we'll see what these guys are doing uh, on the floor. Well, I challenge these guys to, to get better this summer. Uh, the guys coming back from last year to get better, and I think those guys have, have put in some time in, in, in the, on the floor uh, in trying to get better. Uh, they had a great summer in the classroom, so hopefully that kind of gets us into the fall semester. And, uh, and we're practicing here now. Uh, uh, we're, we're excited about it. We think we have some athletic guys, some size guys. Uh, one of the things I said at the end of the year, I want to be a more <clears throat> defensive-minded team uh, and losing some thousand-point scores. You know, I, I was thinking about it the other day. We've lost some thousand-point scores over the last few years. When you think about Dustin Hannes, when you think about uh, Anthony Bell, when you think about Moses Kingsley, uh, and then of course we had two guys in the same game last year uh, uh, reach that plateau. So, you know, how do you replace that? Obviously, we have some guys that we got to start off with, you know, in this, in the centerpiece with a guy like Daniel Gafford, but we've got to have some of these young guys to, to come up and step up for us. Uh, guys such as Mason Jones, who just uh, came from junior college, had a year on his belt. Uh, I think the big key is going to be our team is going to be a guy like Jalen Harris, uh, better known as J5. He's one of those guys that set out last year. And got a chance to go against Darryl Macon and, and Jalen Barker. And, and by the way, I hope you guys have noticed that those guys are on rosters and they're, they're doing well. I had a chance to watch some of Bobby's highlights last, last year and I'll tell you what, he is the epitome of what Razorback basketball is all about. And he just continues to get better. And so that's going to be our mindset. Let's see if we get better each and every day. And with the young teams, such as the team we have, that is going to be our model each and every day. We're going to go out and we've got to get better. We've got to get better. We've had some guys that, you know, at, at times with the individual workouts we've had, uh, that, have, that have really stepped up and come on. Uh, strength and conditioning coaches in place. Dave Richardson uh, came in, uh, formed at Ohio State, and I think he's kind of, uh, kind of took the chip, took the, uh, the reins, and he's kind of going with it with our guys in, in the weight room. They're a little sore uh, early on, but I think it's going to pay off big dividends uh, uh, as we get into this year. Uh, as I said, the schedule. Without a doubt, uh, it's a very, very, for this basketball team, it's, it's a very, very competitive, uh, very tough schedule. And it's one that, you know, going to afford it, afford it, going to avail us some opportunities, some challenges, but it's some great, great opportunities. So, uh, it starts right now. Questions? Hey, Mike, I know Khalil I tweeted something last week about it. He had a big Dyer's appointment, was asking for prayers and stuff. Uh, can you share with us what's going on with Khalil and is, is there any update on his situation? Well, right now, you know, Khalil went through some, you know, recently went through a, a bunch of thorough uh, battery of tests and based on the results, he's not been medically cleared to participate uh, in practice right now. Uh, so at this point in time, he's not practicing. Uh, 
at, at this point, I mean, it's been over a year. Do you have, are you still hopeful? Or just, what do you think of, for him moving forward? Well, that's, that's the statement I just said. Well, right now, he's not, he's not medically fit to play, so. As far as this guards, I mean, do you looking for, for uh, Jalen to kind of take command as the oldest guard here and, and uh, kind of running the things on the point? Who, who do you have looking? Right well, I think with you know, Jalen coming on board and having an opportunity to be here, and, uh, I thought that was the plan to bring the guy in so he can get a little season, get a little understanding of you know, what it takes to, to man the floor, to command the floor out there uh, in that position. And so uh, right now he would be one of those guys. But who's to say? You know, you got a guy like Dad Seals, who I think has had a pretty good camp thus far. Uh, Isaiah Joe, uh, really good camp. So you got some, some people. Keyshawn, you know, once he's uh, got back healthy now, I think he's going to be one of those guys that commands some of those minutes as well. But uh, I think Jalen is going to be very pivotal in, in, in what we do. I think he's one of those guys that can create not only for himself, very, very quick, very athletic, uh, uh, has a good basketball IQ. He can get guys in places and set them up. You know, I just I think back to the days when we had Kareem Reed. Kareem got a lot of assists for Pat Bradley, got easy opportunities for Derrick Hood. And, uh, and that's not compared you know, Jalen to that, but I think he'll be one of those guys that can get in their gaps and, and create and find people in the right places. Uh, very much uh, like Jabril did. Like Jabril, his second year was, I mean, this guy had 205 assists, I think. And uh, so uh, we're looking for him to be able to orchestrate some of these for us, offensively as well as defensively. Mike, you, you, you mentioned uh, um, Isaiah Joe and Desi Sills. I think those guys have known each other a long time, played together a lot before. What do you think about those two guys and their familiarity with each other? What, just what are you looking for out of, out of them as freshmen? Well, I just come in and, and number one is just pick up on the, the little nuances of what takes place at this level. You know, there's a strength factor. There's a quickness factor. You can't take plays off. Uh, you know, Isaiah's a guy that can put the ball in the hole. He can score. He can shoot the basketball. But I think Isaiah's got a really overall game. He can pass the ball well. He's a pretty good defensive player. Uh, just has a great, great basketball IQ. Uh, Dez is one of those guys that really can get in gaps and create, you know, for himself and others. He can score as well. But more importantly, he also uh, he has that ruggedness about him, guarding people. He has a lot of pride. He's got he got that Doberman mentality, which I love about him. Uh, he, he he's a competitor. He's a winner. Uh, I mean, you look at his resume from high school. I want him to bring that. That winning mindset. That's what you want with a guy like Isaiah Joe. You know, those guys have won state championship. Uh, we're trying to win national championships. So you got to have guys with that uh, that mindset, that in their DNA, and, and, and come in and, and leave everything. You know, play for the name on the front of the jersey. That's the biggest key right there. And the, the beauty of it is there's opportunity for those guys. We have some guys that transferred out. And so now these guys are going to be like thrown right into the fire. And, uh, but I think they relish that opportunity. Is this a team that fits what you want to do defensively? Well, I'm, I'm saying that right now, but you know we'll see as we, as, we, as we really get into the defensive philosophy in terms of what we do. I think uh, from a potential standpoint, I think you know, the, the athletic ability there, the length is there. Uh, uh, I want to see if the toughness will be there. And the toughness to me is, you know, when, uh, when you don't play 35 minutes, and you got you got to dig into the tape. Can you have a mindset of getting five stops? Can you get those tough things? Uh, do you have multiple guys that are willing to take the charge? You've know, you got to be able to protect that rim. You know, obviously, you got Daniel, we got some other guys that, uh, especially if you're a team that's extending the floor, pressing people. But you got to have somebody back there that can hopefully uh, defend the rim. And so that comes in a lot of different ways, whether it be taking charges, whether it be coming from behind, hunting the ball. So, I just want a team that's going to be a kamikaze, just get after it, and it'd be more than two or three or four guys. And, and I'm hoping, that's my mindset, is that we're going to have a team that's going to really uh, defend, they're going to fight, they're going to compete each and every night out. Mike, you've had guards that have not always had a lot of size, <coughs> but you had it, or on the wings even. You had Khalil Garland, and Darius Hall in the previous class. This year you got 6'5 in Mason Jones, 6'5 in Isaiah Joe, 6'7 in Jordan Phillips. So I want to know, is this going to be a better team defensively on the perimeter with more length and athleticism? And what kind of versatility and matchup problems can that cause? Follow-up question to that is Jordan Phillips. Is he full go? Is he cleared medically full He hadn't uh, finished up yet. You know, he had a, a meniscus uh, tear, uh, repair is what he had. So he's still 
rehabbing that and hopefully get him back here in the next month and a half or so. Um, Jordan Phillips, that is. Uh, when you talk about the other guy, those are question marks. I talk about question marks, you know. I can sit here and say, yeah, they're going to Defensively, uh, we should be better, but you know, until we go through practice each and every day, we'll, we'll find out. And really, you know, things we worked on this summer is more skill development, and we did some team things. Now we get really, we dive right into it now. You know, the offensive side. This morning we had a 6 a.m. workout where we had we're teaching, we're teaching about offensive sets and things of that nature. And as we get those in, then we'll really uh, work on our defense uh, this afternoon and throughout the week. And, and I get a better feel of what we are defensively. Uh, but you got to connect them all together. It's, defense is not just I'm guarding you, he just guarded him. It's got to be help side. It's got to be two passes away, three passes away. Uh, when the trap takes place, the rotation, it takes time. It takes time. You know, I always say it's like an artist putting paint on a canvas. I say this every year. And what you got to do is you got to, you know, with this group here, I'm having to teach more. You know, normally you go and just clean it up and get better at the things that you want to do. And, uh, and with this team here, uh, there's a lot of teaching, so there'll be a lot of times we we'll slow it down in order to get them to, to speed up. But I want us to be one of the more exciting, faster teams. I, I think it's going to be an exciting team. I really, really do. Uh, we got guys who can run the floor. We got guys that are versatile, can play in many, many different spots. So that, uh, due to your question, defensively as well. You know, uh, a guy like Jordan, he can guard a guard, he can guard a forward. Reggie Cheney, when the switches occur, and we're seeing more and more of that take place in basketball. And you gotta, you gotta have versatility. You gotta have guys that are versatile parts. And so, uh, our bench should be the strength of this basketball team. I promise you, when you guy like a guy like Daniel, uh, a guy that hopefully he's a guy that is capable of getting you a double double each and every night. Uh, so we're gonna gonna lean on him to do some of those things. Adriel's experience really comes. Gabe was a boy. We saw what Gabe was capable of doing. I think Reggie Cheney is going to be an outstanding player here. I think he's going to have a tremendous, tremendous career here uh, uh, in a Razorback uniform. Uh, Keyshawn Emery, I mean, you keep naming names, and, and of course, they haven't put that Razorback uniform on, but uh, you guys get a chance to see a little bit of them today. But more importantly, it's, it's not where they start, it's where they're going to finish at. And uh, uh, I think each and every day they come in, they, they wear the hard hats, they working extremely hard and they're very, very coachable kids. They're very, very coachable. And I think uh, with that being said, I think they're, uh, they're going to end up being a really good basketball team. Hey Mike, with Sills and Joe, do you see any, like a little bit of chemistry between them that normally newcomers wouldn't have because they know each other so well? This is Isaiah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a familiarity. I, I think it is. And, uh, and you can sense that. Uh, he knows where, uh, especially Dad's is. He's a guy that can really penetrate. The open floor is really, really good. And uh, I think you can find Isaiah spotting up or, uh, or vice versa. Uh, so that, that, uh, hopefully that helps in the process. How much growth have those in coming forwards gotten, you know, in these individual workouts you've been able to I think they, they, they've kind of had their eyes open up. Uh, a guy like Ethan here in the last two weeks, he's really starting to show that he can help contribute uh, for the most part. Uh, I mean, there, there are days when they just, I mean, they, they just eat him alive. And, uh, but here recently, I mean, he's starting to now uh, be much more competitive. And uh, that's where, whether it be Daniel, whether it be Reggie, whether it be Gabe, it doesn't matter. So these guys are starting to compete and starting to pick up with some things. And I even see them uh, kind of expediting that process once we get to practice. Once you get to practice, man, things kind of pick up a whole lot more because you're getting closer now where uh, within a month, we're going to be probably playing a red-white game with officials and things of that nature. Then you're going to play an exhibition game, and you ain't going to be able to play all of them. So right now, they're in that uh, situation right now. They're trying to show us, the coaches and staff, you know, who are the guys that should uh, deem all this playing time that's available. And there's plenty of playing time available. What I mean, difference does it make to have Daniel return to the program, <coughs> and how do you utilize him? Uh, you know, Daniel had an uh, extraordinary year. We, we saw that. But now you go from being a guy that was, you know, one of the guys that they didn't really uh, game plan for, but now they're going to have to. And, uh, and we saw going down the stretch, people really targeted him. They, they, they doubled up on him. They made it real tough. Got real physical with him. So one of his charges this summer was to get a little stronger, get a bigger base, get some more go-to moves. And I, and I think he's had a really good summer. Went out to the Nike Academy and, and, and really, 
really played well. So hopefully his confidence, uh, the experience that he got last year versus this year, uh, it's going to be a different animal because now uh, people are going to game plan. They're going to come at you. They're going to make you maybe be the guy that distributes things out. Uh, but I, I think we'll still see Daniel do, continue to do the things he did. I mean, I thought he was one of those guys who could run the floor like a guard. He rebounded the basketball. Very active. Rebound the basketball on offense and defense. So uh, hopefully now he get a chance to uh, he figure out the foul issues that he had all year long. You know, early on, he was playing like he probably was the most efficient guy in the country. I mean, this guy was playing like maybe 12 minutes, getting probably about eight rebounds, about 10 points. And then he figured it out, and, and, and of course, his minutes kind of left. So uh, we just got to have a guy that's going to be a, give us a presence, whether it be in the post, whether it be in the screen and roll situation. Uh, you know, continue to attack the offensive glass. Uh, got to shoot free throws better. He's going to get fouled a lot this year. So we, uh, we're going to make sure that you know that, that a lot of things go through there. You yeah. talked about Reggie Cheney and watching him in the in the uh, shoe, shoe circuits. Seems like a guy that can bring some offense at the four spot. Something y'all haven't always had. How does that help Dan Gafford to have another presence inside if it's Cheney uh, that can find ways to score the ball? Now, Reggie's a skill forward. I think you know, you know, his confidence is, is something that kind of lose. He is kind of sore. Uh, he's a pretty good stripper with the basketball. Uh, defensively, I think he got a chance to be a really good player. Uh, has a long wingspan. I mean, you, uh, if you recall Moses with long wingspan, I think this guy got one of those wingspans uh, very similar to that. So, uh, but very, very athletic, very quick. Uh, can step away from the basket. So he gives us, a, uh, hopefully, in that position where you know it's a tough matchup for people because he can step out and shoot it. Get it inside, but uh, he also can go inside as well. And I think he's going to be a tremendous open court player. Gabe did a lot of the blue collar things for you last year. What kind of transformation has he had <coughs> throughout the summer? I, I, you know, I think Gabe uh, hopefully has seized the opportunity to, to, to get more minutes. I thought the minutes that he played for was very, very effective. Uh, uh, now, hopefully, the game can slow down for him even more as he gets, gets an opportunity to play more. Uh, but I think he's one of those guys that. Is in the trenches, going to do all the little dirty work. You, know, you think about a guy like Cody Clark. Cody was really, really big for us. Uh, even a guy like the court, they do all the little things that add up to be big things. And uh, and Gabe is one of those guys at 6'8". I mean, he's very, very versatile. Uh, he can get it and go coast to coast. I just got to make sure he understands. Sometimes you got to pass on up the floor as opposed to dribbling it up the floor. We're working on that. But, uh, but, I, but I think he plays with his heart. That's going to be a big thing about this team here. They're going to have to play with a lot of heart, you know, to, to make up for the, you know, people are going to say the inexperience. You know, the only way to make up for that is that, you know, uh, how hard you play, how hard you compete. Uh, you got to play together. you got to be the ultimate team. Mike, how would you feel about the team's conditioning overall? And who, who are the best guys running Cleveland Hill? Uh, the Cleveland Hill, I think it was Dez and uh, Isaiah. Funny you just mentioned that. Those guys, uh, they were the guys that uh, finished, uh, did not even stop running. And so that, that was pretty impressive. They've had a pretty good camp up until this point. You know, conditioning was, uh, I thought they did a pretty good job. Uh, you know, and the, the difference in this year now is that, you know, to me the condition takes place whenever they're on the floor. You, know, you have eight weeks in the summer that you can work with these guys. And then, of course, when they came back from the fall, uh, we've been going at it, you know, four hours of end of your workouts that you can do, and plus the weight room. So they, they I think they're in pretty decent shape. But I, I'm going to find out real quick how, what kind of shape they're in this afternoon. Last one here, Scott. Yeah, I guess with the guards you've got, do you feel comfortable that they'll be able to, 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 to produce enough to be able to space the floor for Daniel, for Reggie, for an Adriel to, to be able to play inside? Well, uh, you know, that's something our coaches and I, we, we talked about at length. We have guys that can extend the floor. I mean, you know, when you have guys like Barford and you have a guy like Macon, uh, uh, along with Anton Beer, you know, people had to honor him because he could shoot the basketball. Uh, you know, do these guards command that same respect? You know, because obviously they're going to try to pack it in their own manual. So a guy like Mason, he's got to be able uh, to knock shots and create shots. Uh, I think we do have guys that uh, that can shoot. We'll find out, you know, more as we go. And that's what the practice to me are, are really geared toward, find those guys that can be knocked down shooters. Who, who are those guys going to be? Uh, when it's clutch time, who, who's going to be that guy? Uh, but uh, I, I feel we do. And, uh, 
but you know, I think that's something that we've got to uh, work on and, and create uh, in a team setting and uh, find out, you know, our tendencies, uh, who are going to be those guys. You know, hopefully we can have a, a core in each and every year. We always talk about having that core of eight to nine guys. And uh, right now, it's wide open. It's wide open in terms of who are going to be those guys that are going to start for this basketball team. And that, that excites me because now we can shape this team how we want it to be. And we want to be one of the better defensive teams we've had since we've been here. All right. Thank you. All right.